participate in the debate in Committee of the Whole uh, on the Traffic Safety Distracted Driving Amendment Act 2010. Um, I understand that what we are currently debating is Amendment A2, which was proposed by my colleague uh, from Calgary McCall. Um, and essentially, he's asking that the Act be amended in Section 2 by adding after the following uh, a proposed Section 115.5, um, which would then become 115.6. The Minister shall a collect statistics on motor vehicle accidents involving the use of hands-free cellular telephones and hands-free electronic devices, and b provide a report to the Legislative Assembly on the operation of sections 115.1 to 115.5 within three years of the coming into force of these sections, including recommendations on whether this Act should, should prohibit the use of hands-free cellular telephones and hands-free electronic devices while driving or operating a vehicle on a highway. And you know, Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I'm trying to think back, but I'm I believe it was in the early 2000s that my uh, colleague from Edmonton Goldbar first raised the issue and in, in fact I think put, uh, brought forward a motion, if not actually a bill, uh, to ban uh, cell phones while driving. And I'll admit that the reception that my colleagues gave him at the time was not vigorous, um, but he has certainly proven himself right. Uh, very much so. He was ahead of the curve on that one. He saw what was coming and what was needed, uh, and he was right. Um, and I have uh, learned to respect his, uh, his intuition on things like that. Um, and I, I've certainly seen a difference too, but I'll tell you what my experience in Edmonton Centre is. Uh, I am um, really blessed in Edmonton Centre to have 16 um, seniors, uh, uh, facilities, most of them independent living, so they have their own apartments, they're very active seniors, they just live in a building that was built for seniors, and often there's uh, meals that are offered with it as well. And so uh, several times a year I go out and talk to them about what we're doing in the assembly and uh, what advice and guidance they'd like to, uh, to give me. And one of the things we talked about when I uh, went around in September was uh, distracted driving, because we, we knew that it had been referred to a committee or at least I thought it had been, so I was bringing it up. But uh, I was very interested at the response that I got because most of the seniors that live in Edmonton Centre uh, don't drive. Uh, they make uh, very good use of the public transit through uh, Edmonton uh, Transit Service. Uh, they walk. Some of them have scooters. Lots of them have uh, those walkers, wheeled walkers. Uh, and you see them out on the trails in the River Valley just going at a clip there. So. Um, and what they said to me was, you get that bill passed. And they were pretty clear in the instructions that they gave to me. Because they are people who walk a lot, they were very aware and everybody had a story of how they were waiting at the corner and ready to cross and somebody came whipping around the corner and when they looked at the driver to see why the driver hadn't noticed them uh, ready to step off into the street, well, they have that familiar one hand up to their ear pose which indicates they're holding a cell phone up to their ear. So my seniors were very clear that they wanted handheld devices banned. And we also talked about the rest of the distracted driving issues. Um, and frankly, they were, they were less uh, alarmed about that. Uh, I mean, I don't know how often. I think the number one um, uh, problem is um, swatting at a bee or a wasp that gets into your car. And, you know, to be fair, that happens uh, probably several times in your life. Um, but it certainly doesn't happen every single time you get in your car. And for people that do talk a lot on their cell phones, they they do talk on their cell phones every time they get in the car. So cell phones and the frequency with which they, they uh, are used have really moved them up that um, list of concerns that people have um, with distractions in a vehicle. Uh, now, the second part of the argument here, and I did say to them, okay, well, you guys are really clear that you, you want um, the handheld cell phones banned. Um, what about the hands-free? 
And most people weren't aware that there were these hands-free devices because you can't see them. Uh, and frankly, I don't know how the police would be able to enforce this unless somehow they're checking cell phone records after the fact. But that, that familiar position with somebody's hand up beside their ear, you're not going to see that when it's a hands-free device. And I, in fact, bought a second-hand vehicle uh, that has the cell phone you know um, built into it. And uh, it will not allow me, while, I, while the vehicle is in gear, it won't allow me to change any of the settings or to dial. Um, so when the car's in gear, I, I can't dial. Now, if somebody dials in, you've got controls on the um, steering wheel that you can hit the button and it becomes live. It comes through the radio and through the speakers and, and you're talking to someone. Um, or you can just not answer it, I suppose, and it, and it goes to the regular voicemail. Um, but for a police officer looking at me driving down the road, they, they would have no idea that I was talking on a cell phone. I could be singing along to the radio the way people do, um, and they wouldn't be able to tell that. So I think there's an issue with the, um, uh, uh, the uh, hands-free version uh, that uh, could be creating some problems for the police. Um, as I said, the vehicle, uh, the uh, sorry, you don't say secondhand anymore, the pre-owned vehicle uh, that I purchased that had this particular um, feature in it uh, won't allow me to dial or adjust the um, GPS unit or any of that sort of thing uh, once the car is in gear, but uh, I don't know that that's true on all other vehicles, so maybe it is possible to do it in other ones. So there seems to be a lot of uncertainty uh, around the hands-free versions of things. And that's why I'm very supportive of the amendment that's been brought forward by my colleague from Calgary McCall to collect some statistics on this. We are now able to be able to uh, collect the statistics and, you know, clearly, if there's an accident and somebody, the police comes to the door of the car and looks in and there's a cell phone and it's still on and it's, you know, been uh, uh, thrown down on the, the um, passenger side, I mean, it's pretty clear somebody was on the phone. Uh, you, well, that would not necessarily be the case uh, with the hands-free one. So I think what we need to do is find out whether it's an issue or not. I'm a big proponent of evidence-based decision-making. And we can all get anecdotal stuff. And many times you hear the arguments in this house of, well, that makes sense to me. And I've said that. It sounds like that could happen. I'm concerned that that could happen. But I always try and step back and go, hmm, well, how many people does it happen to? Are we going to create a whole program for four people in Alberta? Or, uh, you know, how frequently would it, is this an issue? Or are we going to be spending money on something that just doesn't happen very often. And I think this amendment uh, is a really good one because it's saying, okay, let's run this act for uh, three years uh, as it is and, and uh, empower the police and others, um, I'm thinking of the AMA here, to collect statistics on whether handheld phones in cars are an issue or not. Uh, because I, I can... I can just imagine how the car manufacturers uh, are going to deal with this one when you've got it's okay in Saskatchewan, not okay in Alberta, it's banned in California, it's all right in Montana. Ye gods, you know, what are they supposed to do? Every car that comes off the line has almost got to be tailor-made for where they're going to uh, end up. And uh, that adds to the price of the car, which nobody's happy about. So obviously we're looking for safety, um, but we're also looking for practicality here. I'm a pretty pragmatic gal. Uh, if we don't need it and it's not causing accidents, I'm okay with it. Uh, if it is, and that's costing uh, money and... Um, and more than money, I mean, collisions often cause death, but uh, more often they cause injury. And as someone that was injured in a car accident a long time ago, um, I know how even, you don't get reported, right? It's, you're not a statistic, um, you're not a fatality, but boy, those, those injuries stay with you your whole life. Um, and they, as you get older, they really start to be a problem. So those broken bones start to get... Um, arthritis and that bothers you when you're older and you need medication for that. So one way or another, uh, traffic collisions cost the individual, their family, and very often society. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm uh, fortunate enough to be on a, um, 
a drug plan with, um, uh, through the Legislative Assembly, of which the employer, the people of Alberta, thank you very much, um, pay a share of that. So I'm, I'm receiving a benefit here uh, with lower cost drugs that I need because of injuries that were sustained in a traffic accident a long time ago. So this all starts to roll together. And as I say, if we knew that we would save money uh, as well as lives and injury and inconvenience and grief, uh, it'd be worth it. But I'm not interested in putting something in place uh, just because we think or we worry that it might be a problem. I'd rather have the proof. Uh, so I think that uh, what's been proposed by my colleague is um, uh, reasonable. Uh, he's not asking that the statistics get, you know, collected over a year, which just wouldn't give us enough to work with. A three-year time period uh, sounds like something uh, that you'd be allowed to collect enough information uh, to give you a baseline reading on it. 